I read the Shmahar Haddad here. So in this uh, video, I'm going to show you uh, why we do have, especially for those who run uh, uh, like ISP's uh, business, why they do have always a difference between the uh, speed uh, on the interface of the WAN and the speed of the interface on the LAN. So uh, there's a lot of customers who say that we always have that big difference between what we see on the WAN and what we see on the LAN, especially for those who are running PPPoE servers. So I'm going to explain why this happens and I'm going to show you what is the best scenario to do to reduce this difference. So then the speed will be shown almost identical. It can't be identical uh, for sure 100%, but it can be like small difference of 5 to 10%. But before I start doing the explanation, I would like to remind every one of you that I do have a, uh, a platform which is called mynetworktraining.com. And on this platform, I do have a lot of online video courses. It's around 80 courses for now from different vendors, Microtech, Cisco, OpenSense, PFSense, Juniper, and so forth. So if you are interested, please look to my platform. You can have a subscription on monthly and yearly, and you can have access to all courses, or you can also uh, buy a membership for bundles. So if you want to learn only Microtech, then you make a membership on the Microtech bundle, and then you can watch only my Microtech video courses. Same for the other brands. So now let's go back uh, to this discussion, and I'm going to show you first why this is problem is very happening to much of ISPs, and then I'm going to say what is the solution for that. So why do we have that big difference between the speed on the WAN and on the LAN? Normally, most of ISPs, whether wireless ISPs or normal ISPs using Microtech, they got the internet from a provider, and then they have their own Microtech router, where they run on it PPPoE most of the time, and they distribute internet via uh, Wi-Fi or via fiber or whatever to other customers. So that is the customer and that is the ISP router. And then what is happening is that the speed you can see between this WAN interface and this LAN interface, you can see the speed is big. There is a big difference. And um, a lot of people see that the WAN interface has a higher speed than what is on the LAN interface. And uh, some countries, what they normally do is that they pay uh, based on the speed on the WAN. So they want really that the WAN to be similar to the LAN because then they pay less. So uh, in this case, uh, first to say that it's very normal that the speed between the LAN and the WAN to be different. So uh, there is uh, nothing wrong with that. But there is a way where we can make it to be almost identical. I say almost because it's never going to be 100% identical. But now let's explain why there is this big difference. Normally, those ISPs who are running PPPoE, then once a customer connects to them, they provide him a queue. And in this queue, most of the time, the default queue type is using is P5 for plane, first in, first out. So what the P5 who makes, all packets are in a single queue. The first packet which enter is the first packet which leaves and there is no fairness. So there's no fairness between users. So what you have with the, uh, with the P5 who is that you get a lot of burst spike, we call it on the one, meaning because the uh, line is working on the on the uh, P5, if it sees that the WAN is busy, it uh, try to keep those packets, and then when the WAN is not busy, it just send it very fast, which makes the WAN to to make this uh, spike, and that's what we call it burst, and that's where it makes the WAN to show more than what you see on the LAN. So that's what is the send a sudden burst. Normally we call it burst. So um, that's why one of the reason why we have this problem is because when we run PPPoE server, we don't change the queue type. It's using the, uh, the P5, normally called default small, I think the queue type. And that makes the problem to see the big difference between the LAN and the WAN. So with the uh, P5, you have unfair, unfair traffic sharing, WAN usage looks high and inconsistent, and you have poor performance during congestion because it's first in, first out, meaning that 
someone is uh, trying to speak uh, or to make phone calls on VoIP, and another one is doing heavy download. So there is, yeah, the heavy download comes, if it comes first, then the VoIP will uh, have to wait for the traffic to pass. Now, uh, there are a lot of uh, uh, solution for that. One of the solution is instead of using the queue type uh, P54, you can use SFQ, which is uh, stochastic fair queuing. So what the, this will make for us, the SFQ, instead of every customer we have uh, uh, P54, what it does that every customer, he has something called it SFQ. And the SFQ makes uh, an algorithm where it creates different flows different flows for each of the customer and it start for example this would go first then this is the second that is the third that is the fourth that is and then like this it makes something we call it round robin so what this does for us is that we don't have that uh, big uh, spike uh, like we had uh, when we used uh, the p 50 so the one will be close to the LAN as the speed but we do have some other problems because it's making the uh, the uh, uh, flow per connection. And that makes problems for a lot of applications to not work correctly, especially for example, like applications like banks and so forth. So this is another solution. So uh, uh, it's better than FIFO. It makes somehow balance between the one and the LAN, but it's still not ideal for customer fairness and uh, in PPPoE environment. The uh, second solution that we can uh, use is to use PCQ. For every every customer, we use the queue type PCQ. So with the PCQ, is that uh, you can create for every customer a queue, and it is based on the customer IP, and not really based anymore on the connection. That means problems which we had with the SFQ, that the apps or websites, uh, like for example Netflix and YouTube and so forth, uh, with SFQ, you may have problem with them, while with the PCQ, you don't have this problem. Also, you have more fairness because the bandwidth would be uh, guaranteed uh, for every uh, service, and there is no one which is uh, taking all the capacity in front of the other, and it's more stable. So it's ideally that you can use for the PPPoE Q type, which is PCQ, the LAN and the one will be looking all, all uh, the way almost uh, the same, and it is uh, better for as the server. So here I have a comparison. So we have the uh, P5 for SFQ and PCQ. Per customer fairness, this is no, while SFQ some what and PCQ yes. Handle PPPOE well, P5 for no. Here is on SFQ somewhat and with the PCQ yes. Performance under load poor on P5 for on this SFQ is moderate and excellent is on PCQ and best use case very small or test set up for the P54 SFU small office labs and for uh, the PCQ for ISP serving customers so those are the or this is what the problem is and those are the solutions now if we want to discuss a little bit further about the result if we uh, want uh, to uh, use the um, PCQ so the, the main question that comes is that will the LAN and the one will be the same uh, as the speed? So the short answer is uh, yes, but only slightly. So there is always like five to ten percent difference that you may see between the LAN and the one as for the speed. So there is not going to be hundred percent identical, never. And there are many reasons why. One of them is that the PPPoE by itself it has an overhead, so it has like eight bytes overhead. Uh, which the PPPoE will add it. Two, that is the TCP and IP and Ethernet overhead. So uh, the one counts raw package while LAN may count only payload. There is TCP acknowledgement and retransmission. That's another problem. Originated traffic uh, from the uh, router. So the router will originate uh, some traffic to the one like DNS, NTP and so forth. And there is the interface counter behavior where you can read uh, this is like how many bytes and packets every interface is doing. So those are some more overhead. So that's those are the reason why the LAN and the WAN cannot be identical, even if you use PCQ and even if you have the full solution. So here are an example, realistic expectation. 
So the LAN, which has the PPPO e server, it's around 9.5 megabits, let's say. The WAN, it's around 10.1 megabits. So that's slightly a bit of a difference, which is around 6%. So that's normal when you have between 5 to 10% of difference, that's normal. All right, so now, but uh, with the PCQ, what you have here is that no big mismatch. So you don't have like the LAN showing much less than the WAN. The packet are shared uh, before hitting the one. You don't have packet last burst and retransmitting. A customer smooth uh, uh, get smooth fair speed and applications uh, for website work perfectly with the users of MSS clamping that I'm going to explain it in a moment. So as a conclusion, you have now accurate LAN ones, um, uh, uh, statistics, scalable shaping, stable client uh, experience, and no manual per customer PCQ needed so what you need to do is just to make one pcq um, uh, for upload the uh, queue type and one for download and that's it so now if we want to see how to apply that on the microtech if you are an isp what you should do first thing you have to do is you have to change the mtu and the mru on your pppoe to 1498 and you leave the mru empty why we do that because the pppoe add eight bytes so we have to uh, reduce our mru mtu which is maximum transmission unit and mru the maximum uh, receiver unit we have to reduce it by eight bytes and that's something i'm going to show it directly now on the microtech so this is my microtech where i have uh, uh, this is let's say considered the ihp router so you can see i have the pppoe is configured here and I have uh, one router connected to it, which is like a customer. So what you need to do is just you have to go from here and you have to make the max MTU and the max MRU to change it to 1492. That's the first thing you need to do. Don't do anything with MRU because this is for the, um, the multi-link that is uh, normally not used anymore uh, with ISP. So keep it uh, as it is. That's the first thing you have to do. The second thing, is that you have to create or enable or make the MSS clamping. So what the MSS clamping, MSS clamping is that uh, the router will communicate with the router at the customer side and it will tell him um, um, how much he can uh, send as uh, the uh, packet size. So normally uh, the uh, formula is that um, it takes the MTU, which we said it is one, 492 right so that is uh, the uh, mtu and it would reduce it by 20 for the ip header and by uh, 20 for the ethernet header then normally the uh, the mss becomes 1452 so what you can do you can set it manually but it's better that you don't do that because uh, when you say here on the uh, this one, when you say a new MSS clamp to PMTU, then the router will communicate with the director of the customer and then he will tell him, now you can send a little bit bigger, now you can send it a little bit uh, smaller, it depends on how the traffic is on your network. And that's something I can show it to you here on the firewall. And uh, this is uh, the mango rule that I created. You have to say chain forward TCP and then on the advance you have to say for the sin then the action change MSS and you say clamp to PMTU and then you click on the path through. So that is very important to make it as well. So this is the second thing that we have to do. And then after that, we have to create the PCQ type. So again, we have to create one PCQ type for the download and one PCQ type for the upload to be applied later on the PPPoE queuing. And that's something I have already done it also. Let me show it to you. So you go from here to the queue and uh, you create two uh, queue tab. I created one for the download and one for the upload. So what I normally did is just, I took that one, the default one, I made a copy of it and then I named it PCQ download. I took that one, I made a copy of it and I named it PCQ upload. And then inside of it, what you can do, you can increase the rate. The rate here is uh, to allow um, uh, for the flows that are created in the PCQ, how much they can have up to what speed. 
So normally what you have to do if you say that you are providing to your customers, because those you have to do it once for all your customers. So in case you have customers you create for them like uh, profiles of uh, 1 megabit, 1 megabit, 2 megabit, 2 megabit, 10, 10, 20, 20, 30, 30, 50, 50, 100, 100, for example, as a package. So you take the biggest one that you have for your customer, say that it's 100, and then you put it here. So you say, this is that is not going to limit for you the speed. It's just uh, for the uh, queue, um, the size that they can handle. So you, I made one for the download, I put 100, and one for the upload, I put here 20, for example. Okay, you can put the number you want, uh, but put always the uh, big numbers that you are offering for your customers. So those are the PCQ uh, created. And then after that, we have to apply it, the uh, PCQ type to the PPP profile. So normally, if we go back to here and we go to the queue, and uh, actually we have to go to the PPP. If we go to the profile, so that's the profile that I have created. Normally the profile, if if I create, or oh, let's go to the default one, uh, the default profile. So the queue has nothing here as queue type, but normally the default one which is used is default small on the upload and default small on the download. Default small and default small, if we go to the queue here to know what are they, so default small is P54. And that makes for us the big problem of the speed between the LAN and the one. So what you need to do, the profile that you are using for your uh, PPPoE server, which is this one. So I have put here, I want to use the Q type, which is PCQ upload. That's for the upload that I created. And over here, PCQ download for the download that I have created. And when doing that, so whenever a customer connect, like this customer is now connecting, if I look uh, to this customer, I'm just uh, trying to see if we can find out um, the queue that uh, it is using. So for here, we have to go to the queue and this is uh, what we see. And we can see directly that the queue type for this customer has been created as uh, PCQ upload and PCQ Download. Of course, you need here to put the speed, so that's the speed you can put it when you create the uh, profile. Um, so actually, um, you go from here and then you say, if you want to put here the limit, you can just uh, put the limit uh, over here. Or you can do it also from a radius server. If you are connected to a radius server, you can also assign the speed from a radius server. So that's, those are the steps that you need to do. And then uh, there is uh, an optional way to do is to just mark and prioritize the DNS and HTTP if you want, but normally the PCQ can handle that. So you don't really need to do that. And of course, don't forget to do the NAT. Then you will check the difference. You will see that it is around five to 10% between the LAN and the WAN. So that is all what I wanted to show you in uh, this uh, lecture. So it's, it's a big question that a lot of uh, the uh, a lot of ISPs ask for it about the difference between the LAN speed and the WAN speed. Why this is happening? So now you understand why this happens and how you can get over the problem. Again, you can't have identical LAN and WAN speed, but you can make it as close as possible. Again, a reminder: please visit my uh, platform, which is mynetworktraining.com, where you can have plenty of courses from different branches uh, so you can have a, a, a subscription on my uh, website and uh, you can uh, learn uh, the brand that you would like to learn about so this is all what i wanted to show in this video don't forget please to make like share the video and put a comment and make my channel more and more popular so more people know about my work thank you very much and see you in some other videos